My name is Peter Panagor, and the second time I died, I was in the back of an ambulance. It was in 2015, and I'd gone for a run the day before, and at the end of the 5K run, my heart hurt, but I didn't know why. The next morning, I went to go solo sailing out in the bay on a borrowed boat, and when I went down to the mooring, it was fogged in from end to end, pea soup. Couldn't even see the boat. Didn't know what to do with my time, so I decided there's a yoga class. I'm going to go to yoga class. So I went to my house and I grabbed my yoga clothes and my mat. And by the time I got to the yoga studio, class was underway and it was full. But my friend, the instructor said, oh, Peter, set yourself up in the doorway. So I opened up the doorway and I set my mat across the doorway with a door jam over my head. And as we began our downward dog, I started to sweat profusely. And it was an August day, and I thought, oh, maybe it's hot in here. But I started sweating more and more, and I soon realized my heart hurt a little bit. And I thought, well, I'm pretty fit. So I just lay down on my mat in Shavasana with my back flat and my arms out, and I decided to rest there as the class continued on. But my sweating got worse, and my heart hurt more. I'd been an ambulance attendant for a period in my life, and I realized I was having a heart attack, but I thought to myself, I'm so fit, it can't be that bad. So I got up and I left class and I went outside and I sat in an Adirondack chair in the shade. But that pain got worse and worse. So I lay down in the fresh mown grass and it was dew covered. And it felt good. But my heart hurt more and more. And I thought to myself, oh, I'm having a heart attack. Oh, I thought to myself. Today's the day I die. I woke up this morning, and I didn't know today was the day I'd been praying for my whole life. Take me home. I don't want to be here anymore. Even as I pursued my inward journey, even as I carved away myself, I prayed every day. Suicidal for half my life. Unable to complete the task. Because a prohibition had been given to me when I died the first time. So as I was there in the doom, I realized today's my day, and I was pretty happy about it. I'd been waiting my whole life to go home to my one beloved. I talked to my wife about it. She's the beloved of my life, but not of my soul. I love her, yes, but the beloved oneness of being is all there is. And to that, I wish to return always, the oneness, the singleness. And so today was my day, and I was pretty happy about it. And then I thought to myself, well, I should probably try to live. Give it a shot. So I tried to sit up to get myself to my car to drive over to the urgent care center, but I couldn't sit up because my heart felt like an elephant was standing in tree pose on my chest. And so I lay back down again, and I thought, oh, this is going to be terrible. All those men and women are going to come out of the yoga studio and find me dead, but there's nothing I can do about it. I didn't even have enough breath to yell. Some time goes by, and the yoga teacher came outside, and she said, Peter, are you okay? I said, my friend, I'm having a heart attack. She said, no way, you're Mr. Fit. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm dying right now. Can you go into the class and get my friend? And... Maybe she can take me to the urgent care center, my neighbor, my summer neighbor. And out she came. And I said, I'm dying. And she said, I'll get you to the urgent care. Have to tell my daughter first. She goes back inside. She comes out. The two of them, the teacher and the neighbor, carry me over to her car, put me inside, and off we go to the urgent care center. I call ahead. I say, I'm having a heart attack. I know the doc. I know the nurses. It's a small town. They say, if you're having a heart attack, why don't you drive up to the hospital upriver, 14 miles? I said, no, I'm not going to make it. I'm dying now. I've been having this heart attack for 30 minutes. So come on in, they say. And I get there. They put me in a wheelchair. They bring me in. They lay me down in the emergency room. They wheel me off to get an x-ray. I come back. I've got 100% blockage in my Widowmaker. The head nurse, she'd been a parishioner. Her daughter had been in my youth group. And all the nurses I knew, 
and they all looked scared. My wife and son show up. The doc says to me, I'll give you a decoagulant. It'll give you a 3% maybe trickle through so that you can get to the catheterization lab an hour and a half away by ambulance and summer traffic. I say, sure. He shoots me up. He says, I've got some morphine for you. I say, no morphine for me. Doesn't it hurt? Yeah, of course it hurts. Feels like an elephant on my chest. But I can't take morphine. It makes me green and vomit in the back of a diesel ambulance. I'll be sick and dying. What are you going to do about your pain? He said. I said, I'm going to meditate. Meditation practice can raise a person above the pain with breath and focus by looking at the pain directly. Long it's been a practice of mine. I employed it under the gurney, headed toward the door. My son's there and he comes over to me and he grabs my hand and he comes in very closely to me, very closely to me. And I look him in the eye and I see his face and he says to me, I love you, Dad. And I see the shock and the fear. And he backs off and my wife's got my hand and we're rolling out and I look up at her and I smile and she smiles to me and she knows. We've talked about it a thousand times. First chance I get that's legit, I'm going home. I'm not from here this beautiful hellscape. I squeeze her hand, she squeezes me back, give her the old wink, and off I go. The doc says to me as I go out the door, you're going to have heart damage. I'm outside the golden hour before I even leave the hospital. Somewhere in the drive down with the ambulance, siren going, I'm in the back, got a paramedic with me, my eyes are shut. I'm meditating. I'm putting all of my mental focus and breath on the pain in my heart so that I don't feel the pain. But I can hear everything. I hear the siren. I hear the cars. I hear the paramedic radio in to the hospital. We're losing him. When she says this, I open my eyes up and I looked her in the face and her face was filled with fear, which is the last thing you want to show a patient ever right into pro phase, right into, I'm going to take care of you. You're in good hands, professional face immediately. She didn't realize that I'd been listening, but the pain came rushing back like a stampede of elephants. And so I dove back inside myself because the pain was too much for me. Going to focus, going to meditate. But when I went back inside, I wasn't inside anymore. I was in the tunnel. I'd been in the tunnel before. I knew where I was. I could see inside myself. But my looking, my seeing, I was looking upward, if there isn't up there. And I was a, what? An, a light body. No physicality to me whatsoever. But a being made of energy. And coming down the tunnel, I'm in the edge of the void. The darkness coming down the tunnel is my angel, my intelligent being of light that I've known my whole life. This radiant, merciful friend who comes rushing down toward me saying, welcome, we welcome you. Come to us. It's time for you to come for, to us. It's like a celebration. And I'm excited and I'm glad and I can sense the superposition of this reduced angelic being in a somehow limited form connected to the fullness of the ultimate supreme self of the divine being. Superpositioned. Come to us and I go. I go and it collects me. And as we go, I think, wait a minute, I know what's going on here. I should take a minute. Be sure everything's okay. After all, the first time I came back, I chose to come back for the sake of my mom and my dad. I decide, oh, well, I'm going to take a peek around first. So I look back inside my human self and I see my son's face and I see all of his pain and his shock. And then I see my daughter and I see her divorce and the abuse and the 
the brand new baby. And who's going to protect the baby? Who's going to protect my daughter? And as I wonder about my granddaughter, I see her two tracks of life, without me and with me. And I see that my children still need me. And I turn back to the angelic being, to the angel of light, and I say, if it's all the same with you, and I know the timelessness is timelessness, and all is well and has been well and will be well, and my life is mortal, I'm going to go back and stay for as long as I can to be a granddad, to be a father the best I can, to be a husband. So I turn and I go in, and I'm back in my body again, and then I'm in the catheterization lab, and then it's ICU, and meanwhile I'm still meditating, no morphine. They finally give me something for the pain that isn't an opioid, and I woke up the next day in the hospital. My family's in the room visiting friend who's a doc and her husband, the lawyer, my friend. And I say, I announce, I died yesterday. And my wife says to me with a smile, I thought you were going to die yesterday. I was already making plans. I said, well, I said I was gonna, but I chose to come back for my granddaughter, for my kids for you. I know my mortality. I know timelessness. I know who I am. And I came back born again. Every time a near-death experience happens, every time a mystical experience, a true mystical experience happens, we get born again. I came back a different person. And here I am. I'm Peter Panagor. And if I have a story to tell, it's the story of my inward journey back toward oneness using focus and breath. Hatha Yoga with Kriya Yoga and Kundalini and the practice of silencing one's mind. Centering prayer. If you seek the oneness of being, if you seek to know yourself, seek inside yourself and see who you actually are. Peace and love, everybody. Namaste.